You don't have to have time or talent, you just have to have DaVinci Resolve and a good teacher on YouTube to figure out what you're doing and how you're gonna do it. Hi, my name is Ethan Robbins. I've been working in video for about 15 years now, and I've done millions of views across the various channels that I've made content for, so I kinda know what I'm doing. And uh, today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to remove things in your video or uh, in your feed, right? So here in this clip, I have a shot of my ceiling that I took, and uh, you can see there's a bunch of can lights here, but there's also this fire sprinkler, right? Now, let's say I want that fire sprinkler gone, and you can apply this method to anything else or any other footage that you might have where there's something on a clean background that just needs to come out, right? So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. It's super simple, it doesn't take more than just a few minutes, and you're gonna feel a bit like uh, DaVinci Resolve or at least a fusion wizard by the time we're done with this and you figured out how to do this. So let's hop into it. So you see I'm in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna right click on the clip that I wanna do this with, and and press open in the Fusion page, right? Fusion's gonna open up. This is my workspace here. This is how I like to work. I like to work with a single viewer here and nodes going from top to bottom. If you wanna figure out how I've set my video or my workspace up like this, I'll link my video about that right here, or I think it'll be, I think it'll be, no, it'll be right here, right? I think I'll link my video and uh, you can watch that video, figure out how I did this. So the very first thing you wanna do, and this is extremely simple. The very first thing you wanna do is just take a tracker node. So you're gonna press shift and space bar and search tracker, tracker, right? Just the regular tracking node, press enter. And I also have my tracker node put up here in my toolbar so I could just drag it down here into my flow line, but we don't need two, we only need one. What you wanna do is in your tracker node, take your little tracking panel right here and put it over the thing that you wanna take out. In this case, it's this fire sprinkler, right? And uh, this is IntelliTrack, so it's powered by AI. And generally, IntelliTrack is really good and it's extremely smart. Most times, you just have to put it over the thing that you wanna track and it gets the idea. In this particular case, since everything is so white and it's very grayscale here, I am still gonna put the center of my tracking point over the areas of contrast here. So that's just the shadow made by the fire sprinkler. And it tracks a little bit easier that way. It just depends on the clip that you're using, it's all very context-based. So here, I'm just gonna press track forward and backward in my inspector right here, let it do its thing. You'll see here, my playhead's moving, it's tracking and it's sticking right on it. It's incredible how well this works. All right, and it's done. And you can see here, if we zoom in, as we take our playhead and drag it, uh, it stays glued to that same spot the entire time and it follows the motion of the object based on the motion of the camera. This movement here is the movement of me holding my phone, Anyways, it did a great job. So next, what you wanna do is you wanna add a patch replace tool. Shift spacebar, patch replacer. Patch replacer right here. Press enter, take this, add it into your flow line, okay? And you're gonna see these two things pop up on screen. Well, what are these two things? These two things are basically like clone stamp in Photoshop or Lightroom if you're used to using those softwares. Basically, it's gonna take whatever is in this circle right here and just put it right here. So. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna resize these circles, okay? And I'm gonna put what's called the target circle, because this is the target, this is where the replacement is going to go. I'm gonna put it over the, uh, the sprinkler. I'm gonna put it over the sprinkler head right here, okay? Now what you wanna do is in your tracker node, right? You wanna come up in your inspector and press this little pin button. When you click that, it pins your this specific node and all of the settings associated with that node in your inspector. So now, no matter what other nodes you load, it'll load the other node and a tracker at the same time because it's pinned. So now you can see multiple nodes and all of the effects associated with them. Follow along here, okay? I'm gonna go very slow and try to make this very clear and methodical for you so you can follow along. At this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some parenting. Now, if you've ever used Adobe After Effects, you recognize parenting as uh, taking that little line, right? It's called a pick whip and uh, dragging it over another layer or another effect. And so the properties associated with whatever you're dragging that line to then affect the child layer and it's, you're familiar with parenting. We're gonna be doing that here in DaVinci Resolve. So in your patch replacer effects, right? In your, in your settings here, you wanna click down on patch positions. So now you're gonna see source position and target position. We've already covered that this is the target position right here. So that would mean that this is the source position, which makes sense because it's gonna take whatever's here and just stamp it right here. But the problem is, right? The problem is, is that because there's motion in this clip, it's gonna look funky, right? So you could see here, if I play it, it doesn't look right, right? Like you could see, you could see the motion you could see the patch replace. It doesn't look right, so we need to fix that. Going back into Fusion, I wanna put the uh, fire sprinkler right in the center of my target position. And in your inspector here, right click on target position, the little keyframe diamond, 
and press expression. Take this little plus sign, click and drag all the way down to track center so that your mouse is over the track center word and let go. So now you'll notice that that track center follows the sprinkler head or the thing that you've tracked and it follows it perfectly, right? But that doesn't work because then you still get things like this that are just, it's not right because it's taking the, the corner of the ceiling here. So what we want to do is we want to make it so that our source position is about right there and it moves with it. It follows it around. So no matter where the target goes, the source goes as well. Okay. All you're going to do is come up to your patch replacer settings again. See, this is where we parented target position. Now we're going to parent source position. So right click on the keyframe, press expression. And then you're going to take this pick whip, this parenting, and just target target position. That's it. So now they're both over the exact same thing, right? And you can kind of see where it is and how big that they are. We're going to dial in some settings here. We're going to make this a little bit smaller. We don't need it any bigger than about that right there, okay? So now what this means, how we've set this up, is that this target position is parented to tracked center. And this source position is parented to target position. So both of the target and source positions are going to be connected to tracked center. So wherever the center of the track is, is where both of these are gonna be. But we can see here in this circle, the fire sprinkler's not exactly right in the middle. So we wanna offset it by pushing it up a little bit. I'm gonna push it up and to the right, ever so slightly, just so that the thing is in the middle. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Because the source position is parented to the target position, we only need to move the target position to move the source position as well. So we're moving one and the other automatically moves with it, okay? So target position is the one we're gonna change. What you wanna do is in this expression right here that populated after you parented your target position, you wanna press space, press plus and type, and space again, space plus space, type the word point, capital P-O-I-N-T, open parentheses, and now we're moving in terms of pixels, okay? Or uh, points, so to say. So I wanna move maybe 0 0.005, maybe 0 0.003 over to the right. Okay, we're gonna do X and Y, okay? Point zero zero three, comma, and now I have to give it my Y position. Uh, and I want that to go up about the same amount, so I'm gonna do point zero zero three. Now, we're gonna see how this works, and we're gonna see how far this moves up, and we can dial it in with some trial and error afterwards, okay? So I'm gonna click that, and it moved it over on the X axis as much as I'd like it to. Now I want it to move up a little bit more on the Y axis. So I'm gonna drag this out a little bit. And in my Y number right here, I want it to go up a little bit more. So maybe let's try seven instead of 003. I can go up just a little bit more than that. Let's try nine. Perfect. Now the fire sprinkler is give or take right in the middle of our tracked circle, right? So again, I just want to iterate what this expression is. It's just parented to tracked center, right? So it's just gonna follow the tracked target where our tracker was. And all we did was space plus space, capital word point, open parentheses, your decimal point for on the X axis, how far you want to move left or right, comma, decimal point, how far you want to move up or down on the Y axis, close parentheses. That's it. That's all you need to remember. And you can move your tracking point based on that. So with that in mind, if we wanna take this chunk of pixels right here and cover here with that, all we need to redo is retype this expression. So watch this. Now in source position, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do space plus space, capital P-O-I-N-T, open parentheses. And I just wanna move this over to the left, probably let's say one point. Let's just try that. Let's just do solid numeral one comma zero because we don't wanna move it up or down and close my parentheses, okay? Press enter there. That moved it way too far to the right just because I'm dumb and positive moves it to the right. I wanna move it to the left ever just so slightly. So the number needs to be negative here. See, this is what one is. This is where trial and error comes in. So I don't wanna do one. I obviously, firstly, I wanna make it negative because I wanna move to the left and I wanna do point zero zero one. Let's see what that looks like. That didn't hardly move it enough. That only moved it over here. So now let's do 0 0.01 maybe. It's moving it to the left, just not far enough. Let's do 0 0.05. That's exactly what I wanted right there. So now watch what happens as I drag my playhead and the clip plays. You see both of these things move in conjunction with each other because they're tracked properly. Now just for a little bit of detail, I'm going to take my blur edges right here and put that up just a little bit. And you'll see if I go too far, you start to see the inside. We don't wanna blur it that much. We just wanna take it just to the point where you can't see the inside, and that's that. So now, if we go back to our edit page, full screen this here, and play this clip, you can't tell where that fire sprinkler was. It's just gone. Like, if you didn't know any better, if you were none the wiser, you would have absolutely no idea that that was there, but if we bypass our color infusion effects, boom, there it is.
And there's so many different ways that you could use this effect. There's so many different ways that you could use this little trick to hide things that you don't want in your videos if they're moving and or if the camera is moving as well. You just have to keep in mind the background and the pixels in which you're pulling from to cover that thing up. Because for example, if I was gonna take this area right here where there's where there's shadow that obviously wouldn't look right. In this case, it worked really well just because the ceiling right next to the sprinkler head was perfectly white, so it blended in just fine. But it's something you should know. This is something that you should be aware of and something that you should have the skills for. So hopefully you do now. I will make this footage available for download, actually. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this footage available for free to download on my website. Uh, and if you wanna practice with this, if you wanna give this a go, go for it. Uh, I'll make it so that you can download this footage and give that a try on your own. So uh, I'll link that in my description. And if you learn something, I really, really, really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel or just at the very least, like this video. If you've ever seriously given YouTube a shot, you understand how much the algorithm really favors a, just a like on a video and how how far that really goes so just please just like the video uh give me a comment if you've learned something or if you think you're going to be using this on any specific project and uh don't forget to also maybe support me on patreon that link is also in the description if you would be so kind uh just to at least check it out and uh that's it for me for this video i uh i really wanted to get this one out this one has been on my list of videos to make for a very 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 long time now so i'm glad i got it done it, uh, this one needed to get done. So glad it happened and I'm so glad to have you watching and uh, I will see you in the next video whenever the next one comes out and I will see you in the next video uh, next Friday, actually. I truly, genuinely hope you have a great day, a great night, great afternoon, whatever it is for you. Make it home safe and uh, see you in the next one.